In this video, we're gonna find out how much electricity we can regen back into a battery pack by driving an electric car down a mountain. Now the concept is pretty simple. We're gonna take this all electric Mini Cooper and drive it straight up a really steep mountain. And we're gonna see how much electricity we use. And then we're gonna turn it around at the top of the mountain and drive it straight back down and see how much electricity we put back into the battery pack. This video is brought to you by Manscaped. Com. You know, I love Manscaped because they give you tools, solutions for the three odor zones, the body, butt, and balls. They just launched their new Lawnmower 4.0 waterproof electric trimmer. And now you can get it with the ultimate Manscaped experience when you purchase their new performance package 4.0 bundle. This is an all-in-one kit that includes all the tools to perfect your body grooming experience from your morning shower to late night, be ready for anything moments. After your shower, be sure to apply Manscaped Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, a quick absorbing, clear drying moisturizer lotion for all day protection. For that midday refresher, be sure to pack your Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray with cooling aloe vera and anti-inflammatory properties. The new Performance Package 4.0 bundle now includes their new Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. For a limited time, you can get two free gifts, the Shed travel bag and the manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs don't wait until next year go to manscaped.com and use my promo code fastlane car to get 20 percent off plus free international shipping plus two free gifts join the manscaped movement today the performance package 4.0 it says it all your body and balls will thank you so here we go zeroing out the trip computer zeroing out the efficiency meter and we are starting our test with 88 percent battery now this is going to be a really fun video because we are outside of boulder colorado driving up a mountain called flagstaff mountain and flagstaff is a really steep mountain it's not extremely long but the degree of steepness is really up there and it's got a bunch of really sharp twists and turns but more importantly it's basically straight uphill with very little to no flat and certainly no downhill till the peak of the mountain and we're going to see how much electricity we use driving this electric car up the mountain and then we're going to turn around and electric cars will actually put electricity back into the battery by regenning on the way down the mountain so essentially the electric motor that propels us up turns into a giant generator and will help us slow down as we make our way back to Chautauqua Park here in Boulder, Colorado. So, what do you need to know about the specs on this electric Mini? Well, it's got a single electric motor mounted in the front. This is a front wheel drive car, just like a Mini was meant to be. It's got right around 180, 190 horsepower, zero to 60 in the seven second range, but it's extremely fun to drive. And I do mean extremely fun to drive. This is, in my opinion, the most fun EV on the market. Now this generation of Mini called the F56 debuted in 2014. The electric one is now a couple of years old and it's actually an interesting kind of hodgepodge of stuff that shouldn't work. So it's based on the gasoline Mini. It's got the drivetrain out of the BMW i3, that little toaster looking BMW electric car. And on paper, it only has like a hundred and 14 miles of range, so nothing too impressive in terms of specs, but it's one of those situations where when you put it all together, it's more than the sum of its parts. It really is a truly fantastic, well-dialed platform. So let's talk about that battery that we're gonna be using today. So this has got a 32.6 kilowatt hour battery, but that is gross. The net capacity about 29 kilowatt hours. How does that compare to some other, some other electric cars? Well, if we look at like a Tesla Model S, Tesla Model X, that's kind of one of the history's gold standard electric cars, those have a 100 kilowatt hour pack. So this is like a third of that. And that's why the range is fairly limited at 114 miles. So I'm very curious to see how much electricity we're gonna use on this short jaunt up the mountain. So we are down to 85% state of charge and we have gone 1.2 miles so we've used 3% in a very short amount of time but that's because 
we are going straight up a hill. I mean, this is a really serious climb. It's also, as electric cars go, fairly light, so it comes in at right around 3,100, 3,200 pounds, which is very heavy for a Mini, but as electric cars go, it's practically a lightweight, and as such, the platform is extremely tossable. It's got plenty of grip. The uh, acceleration is, as you'd expect, an electric car instant, and it shoots well above its weight class. In the last 4,000 miles we've owned this, I've gotten into several stoplight Grand Prix with much quicker cars, but you just simply give it a little <laughs> sport of electricity and you go blasting off down into the sunset. Sure, 114 miles is pretty limited, but when's the last time in your daily commuting that you drove more than 40, 50, even 60 miles? The nice thing about having a small battery like this is you really don't need to upgrade your house in any way to charge this vehicle. As long as you have like a place to plug it in, even on a 110 volt outlet, you can drive this to your commute, you can drive this to do some chores, bring it on home, plug it into your standard wall outlet, wait overnight, and it should be good to go by the morning. Now, of course, if you do get like a 240, 220 volt outlet installed, you can charge this much quicker in a matter of a couple hours from dead to full, but for most folks, even a standard wall outlet is plenty, and that can't necessarily be said about some of like the larger battery pack cars. So yes, 114 miles, you're not gonna be taking this cross country, but it wasn't really meant to go cross country if, and this is a big if, you have even a standard place to charge this up at home or at your apartment overnight, this should be plenty of range. And our electricity um, state of charge is down to 82%. Now, we are still going uphill. We have not hit any flat. We have not hit any downhill. And I'm really curious to see how much of that energy use can be put back into the battery when we turn it around. I have um, the car in normal mode, so I'm not in the sport mode, I'm not in any of the green modes, just normal mode like you drive it every day. And when we get up to the top, we'll see how much we use, turn around, and head back down. We made it to the top of our mountain with 81% battery remaining, and we started with 88% battery, so we used 7% in a very short amount of time. Now, let's take a look at the amount we've driven. We've covered 3.5 miles, and once again, all uphill. So, I want to do a quick bit of math here. So, the usable capacity on this battery is about 29 kilowatt hours. We used 7%, so in total we used right around 2 kilowatt hours of energy. Let's turn around and see if we can put two kilowatt hours back into the battery. All right, back down the mountain. So we averaged 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour. That is a measure of efficiency. That's terrible. But we're gonna reset all of the gauges and head back down the mountain and see if we can put 7% back into the battery. So we are currently sitting at 81. Start the vehicle up and off we go. Now we've got all the settings for the climate control and everything exactly the same as when we started going up the mountain. So we're gonna keep them the same on our way down. Now this vehicle actually has two different regeneration settings, a low regen and a high regen. And we are going to stick it in the highest regen setting. In high regen, like we are right now, when you release the accelerator, the car slows down really quickly, and I do mean very quickly. Uh, almost like you are applying a fairly heavy amount of brake, but what that's doing is it's essentially dragging the electric motor, which is in turn putting electricity back into the battery, kind of like how an alternator works on a gasoline car. We've got one mile, and we're still actually at 81% state of charge. That's interesting. Hmm not quite as easy to region as it is to use electricity. We'll keep going and see where we're at when we get to the base of the mountain. Currently at 82%, so we've put 1% back into the pack. So here we go to the steepest section of the road. Now, cameraman Case in the Nissan in front of me, the gas-powered Nissan truck, is having to use a lot of brake to maintain his uh, safe rate of speed. Now that, of course, puts not only a lot of wear on the brakes, but a lot of heat into the brakes, you can get a lot of brake fade. I have not had to touch my friction brakes once. I have not engaged either front or rear brakes once. It's all been regenerative brakes, so that's pretty cool. And then of course, Case has to downshift um, to keep the truck in a safe uh, speed, a safe gear essentially, so he doesn't have to rely on the brakes. 
I don't have to downshift. I just drive the Mini and allow it to regen. It doesn't put any um, wear on the battery or the electric motor. So, almost back down and still at 83%. So we have added 2% back into the battery. Now, this of course is more a simple look at regen ability because there are a lot of factors that go into it, including powertrain efficiency of the vehicle, accessories that are on during this test, both up and downhill. Climate control has been off, radio has been off, just driving it like a normal car here. Now we are approaching our starting point here right at 3.1 miles, so we have a little bit further to go, but it's flattening out a little bit as we approach the bottom of the mountain, and I don't think we're gonna get much more than 83%. So a very interesting video. Going up the mountain, we used 7% battery, which translates to roughly two kilowatt hours, but going back down the same distance, the same hill, the same temperature, the same settings, we only put 2% battery back into the Mini, so roughly half of a kilowatt hour. Now this makes sense. Unfortunately, even if this car was even more efficient than it currently is, the laws of physics just don't allow you to recoup the same going back down. However, regen braking is still very cool and it still is much better than a gas car where you're just turning that kinetic energy, that potential energy into heat and wasted brakes. At least on the Mini, you're using that downhill to help you drive a little bit further when it becomes flat. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, this has been Tommy. We'll see you on the next video.